Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Hoops with Convino Memory and myself, Chris Foss. Man, really excited, man. Joining us today, we got Kamaka Hepa on, fresh off of all conference season at Hawaii, fresh off of NBA Summer League with the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, but man, three-time state champion, three-time Gatorade player of the year between Alaska and Oregon, a gold medals with USA Basketball, but He's set to right now embark on his dream of playing professional basketball here in the next couple of months. So we're excited for him to have, for him to be on with us. Maka, man, welcome on with us today, man. Appreciate you guys, man. No doubt, no doubt. Well, like I said, you're you're coming fresh off of coming fresh off of summer league, fresh off of off your senior year. Kind of talk us through the process that you're in right now with with the training piece of it, and then, man, what what you had in Vegas the past couple of weeks with, with summer league. Yeah, so I just finished up playing basketball, uh, obviously at the University of Hawaii. Um, I graduated and I graduated in May. So uh, following that, I came out to L.A. to kind of be near my agent um, and was just doing a bunch of pre-draft training and stuff, working out with uh, Zach Gonzalez. Uh, so that was a really good uh, experience for me, for sure. I feel like just having that exposure, being able to play against other pros. I feel like that's the biggest thing because obviously the game is a little bit different. Um, but that was that was definitely big for me in terms of like taking a step in my game, I feel like just having that. Uh, and then obviously having uh, like being blessed with having the opportunity to work out for a couple NBA teams. So it was a, it's been a really good summer for sure. And I've enjoyed it. Uh, Obviously, as you mentioned, was fortunate enough to play in the the summer league uh, out in Vegas. Was playing with the uh, Pelicans, so that was that was a whole other thing. Like seeing how they operate at that level, like being at the facility in the gym and stuff with coaches on the staff. Like that was a uh, that was definitely something like I didn't take for granted for sure. So it was it was it was definitely good. I enjoyed it. Um, man, body looking cut up and trim too. Like, man, you, you're taking advantage of your time. Trying to, yeah, nah. Definitely going out to Hawaii helped with that. Just being on the island and stuff. I feel like it was a it was a good experience for sure. But yeah, yeah I'm just trying, to you, bro. No doubt. Well, man, kind of staying on that. Man, you, you just played the NBA summer league. Like. We'll, we'll dive into what the journey was, but like you said, kind of working with pros and, and you're on the doorsteps of of being a pro. Man, how, how surreal was that? How much? I know you said you took advantage of the opportunity. That wasn't something that, that was lost on you, but but how was that opportunity coming from where you're coming from, the path that you've been on to, man, you, you're like a step away from being a professional now? <laughs> nah, it's definitely like something that I try to reflect on a lot for sure, just – really taking it in because like I know you're only a rookie one time you know what I mean so really just embracing like this new unknown thing that I'm going into something that like I've dreamed about like growing up obviously I'm from a small village uh on the top of Alaska for those who don't know um so just being able to be blessed enough and to work hard enough to be at this level is it's not something you can take for granted and it definitely gives you like a I don't know, like more of a motivation to just, you know what I'm saying, just keep getting better. And it's and it's easy because I feel like now that basketball is my job, like it's uh I'm able to really get into it. Like my attention's not so, you know what I'm saying? I had to get my master's degree, undergrad, all that stuff. So like it it definitely feels good to be have my attention on getting better. Man, well, I'll say this from the jump. Um just for people who are watching to know, I mean, between the three of us, we've known each other since, come on, you were 16 years old? Yeah, 2016. Yeah, Spring of what was that workout, Bino? That first workout I had, it was me, uh, Tegan, and Cap. Oh, when we was at um, Portland Christian. Yeah, talk about that. <laughs> talk about that, because that was, like, my first taste of it. And I was like, okay, I got to get better. Like, that's, yeah, like – yeah, yeah. I one takeaway from that workout because I came in like that was definitely like my early days in Portland, probably like the second or third day I got out there, I feel like. But going up against Cap and Tegan, you know what I mean? Like it was a it was definitely like, OK, I got to I got to stay in the gym for sure. That I, mean, I remember you was bending over. It was like it, it, it hit your condition. <laughs> I was hey, I was Yeah, sure. it, it hit. You. But see, that's the reality. That reality hits you. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, that was right after. Uh, yeah, that was like my last time playing in in Alaska, playing for playing in Barrow and stuff. Yep, that, that was it. Fresh off the state year. championship. Yeah, that, that was probably like what that that might have been four weeks after or or three or two weeks after. Uh, now nah, I want to say two weeks after the state championship game. So, yeah, I should have stayed in shape. <laughs> Now, obviously, you've been doing this type of stuff for a while, just like this lifestyle that you're embarking in. And even from if we're dating back then when you first got here, man, that's the one thing, even though, I mean, every player has challenges, but I just saw your approach. And if Foster mm-hmm. know, and I told him already, I was like, man, with this dude's approach, like he can just pretty much do what he want to do. Like he's already got the height and stuff. It's just a matter of just um, continue to stay on that path. Exactly. Wow. That was where that where that come from early. You said what? Where that come from early? The approach, the the all that kind of love <laughs> for the honest, game, man. Like like, how'd you I, fall in love with the hell? All that come about? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was a combination of like the environment I grew up in, like in a small town, um, and then also like like basketball was just kind of always in my family. Like my dad had me playing when I was young, and like I had a bunch of cousins and like uh good friends like we were all around the same age and so we all came up together because we're not playing against nobody else but each other and so we did that growing up from like as like as early as, as I can remember and so we would be outside at like midnight the sun's still up playing on like at my uh at my cousin's house um on a dirt like on the dirt though because <laughs> there's no uh there's no pavement up there and stuff so it was up there late but that's I feel like that's where I kind of learned the game of basketball, just like playing, you know what I mean? Like getting a good feel for it. And so I feel like ever since then, like it's just been something that I enjoy, like competing, competing with. So, but that's kind of what it's been. And like, I feel like now too, I feel like the exposure to like how pros work and like the work ethic it it takes, like with all the time that you have, uh, I feel like that also kind of, gave me some insight in terms of how I want to, you know what I mean? Continue to, and like build to what, what I have been doing. Man, Bino just mentioned it kind of, man, from get go, his initial, um, his initial kind of impression with you. I remember I was being at Jeff, your first practice with Portland mm-hmm. basketball club. And uh, man, I remember like you had just got there that morning. A Friday, mm-hmm. I got there that Friday, hadn't really met anybody except for Tegan in a workout a couple of weeks before. Um, yeah. you and your dad came back. I remember just you being the loudest guy in the gym from the get go. Yeah, and kind of looking at that, I was like, man, he doesn't know anybody else that's here, and whether you were nervous or not, you masked it. Um, with being able to show IQ and feel and just man, throwing yourself into it. What do you remember from kind of that first? That first kind of situation is like you said, man, you were coming from a spot that that wasn't that. I know it was something that you were kind of seeking out with the move, but you were in something <laughs> that was completely different new environment. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like that that was kind of the start of me just moving around. Like, I haven't lived in Barrow since then, like, since I moved to Portland. <laughs> and, like, it being the first place, I feel like I grew, I like grew the most there. Um, But yeah, just kind of in terms of like playing and stuff uh, and like those first couple of practices, I feel like because I didn't know anybody and like it was all unfamiliar, like the only thing that was the same was like hoop, you know what I mean? So like, I didn't want to like playing, playing different, you know what I mean? Like playing not tentative, but like shy or whatever. Like, I feel like what, how I've always played is, being like the guy that that talks and communicates um and kind of just making sure everybody on the same page um and I wasn't going to change that like moving to Portland and I feel like that helped me build like relationships too um and really just being open minded about it but obviously being 16 years old it was it was it, it had like it's it's a tough part too for sure but it was fun though gotta be hard as hell yeah just uprooting from what you've known for 16 years and then you know just for listeners he's talking about a, coming in as a sophomore and having a consistent voice like that like we know pros 
to what you just experienced playing summer league and what you're doing um, in college players that don't communicate at all. So for you to come already with that skill set, um, I think is like extremely powerful and shows uh, your ability to learn quick because you learn that somewhere at a camp or something prior to that or somebody taught you that back in barrel and, and you locked in on that. I think mm -hmm. that's what's helped you grow and be able to um, be a chameleon in the different places that you go to. Mm -hmm. Nah, for sure. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a, uh something that I take pride in for sure. So it felt natural. You know, you challenged us with it. <laughs> I, 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 remember, I remember that off jump. Like it was like, man, the cap that just got here, they didn't know anybody is talking more than these seven guys that have known each other for the last eight, nine years. And he's exactly. diving right into it. Like we need to continue to press this further and further and pull mm -hmm. out more and more from you. It was like, okay, if this is the baseline already, that means, man, we could start from here and go even further with, with where this is that in your development. Yeah, and that goes back to, like, what I was saying, like, being out there, being able to work with you guys, you know what I'm saying, really just working on, like, my young game. Like, being that young, I feel like you just have so much more potential. So I feel like that's kind of where my game started to, to develop, you know what I mean, just continuing to get better. What were the biggest challenges for you off the court? Obviously, you guys – Coming from a town that how big is Barrow? Just tell me, tell us that off, off jump. Uh, it's it's not big at all. I mean, it's forty five hundred people, and you can drive around the whole town in five minutes. And I remember us talking, even like, man, gosh, where were we coming back from? I remember you talk about like when you go to Anchorage for tournaments, like, man, when we'd get cereal, like that was dope. Like that was like the coolest thing that we could have because we did because it was so much, it was so expensive yeah. to be able to get cereal I back in Barrow. Exactly. Yeah. If you didn't, if you didn't ship some up from Anchorage, you wasn't getting cereal at the grocery store because it's just crazy expensive out there. But uh, yeah, I mean, the transition like culturally was definitely like it was a big culture shock for me. You know what I'm saying? Especially going to Jeff, like I feel like going there helped me grow a lot uh, just in terms of like the off the court stuff, like being able to be at a school that has that kind of environment. I feel like it definitely helped me just with my relationships, especially like the guys on the team and then other people that I met at the school and stuff like it was a it was a really good experience and I felt like I grew a lot there. For sure. Baze, you you had something I know talking about uh because you were coaching with the young fellas at the time. And you had mm -hmm. Jackson Moot. What well, talk talk about that a little bit, Baze. Yeah, Mookie, Jackson, Lamar, and all those guys uh, back when they were in eighth grade. And um we would we would start our practice right when the varsity practice would finish at Jeff. That's when we could get gym time. And so Kamaka would just be finishing his varsity practice. And we're starting our stuff with, you know, stance and hand placement, slides in the key, closeouts, building up to two on two down screens. And Kamaka, it wouldn't be like, hey, I'm going to come on over and help for a little bit. And then I'm going to go. He was like part of his schedule. He literally get done with that practice, come down and then jump in. Like he was trying to make the damn eighth grade team with the doing all the stuff um, hard and everything. But uh, he didn't have to try to pull people aside and teach just the way he was embodying doing. It'd be like, I'm jumping on their back and the same stuff I'm saying to them, come on, we just go do it was like, yeah. no, like, look, look, you just do it like this. You don't have to hear him yelling or doing whatever. Yeah, and I feel like I learned that, like, at your workouts over at Portland Christian, like, seeing Potsy and them, uh, Potsy and T-Mac, like, working out with them and seeing them go hard and stuff, like, so it just felt like, you know what I mean? Like, I seen it, I observed it, and then doing that was natural, like, just getting better. And I remember it was, like, towards the middle of the practice, you had us run a 17. I was like, oh, 17. But, no, nah, I, I did it. <laughs> I'm helping. I'm helping you out, coach. Come on. <laughs> but nah, it was uh I remember that day like very vividly. It was a it was a good workout. Do you know That's where these young fellas are at now? Like, do you know kind of where that I don't know where movie you sold into? I'm a movie star now. Oh boy, a movie star. <laughs> nah. <laughs> But uh, I saw they was playing in Arizona uh, for a little bit. I know Lamar played his uh, – I think was, – was he a freshman at Texas Tech? Yeah, so it looked like he was hooping over there. 
Like I saw some highlights and stuff, and it looked like he was playing solid. Yeah, and Mook and uh and Jackson are going to Oregon. Um, this they'll be freshmen there this upcoming year. But that was like you influenced that. I might you be like, oh, I was only in there a few times. No, them guys didn't know what the blueprint was. They didn't know the process, and it's tough if you got to just take the normal time you accelerated that learning for them, for them to see somebody that was in your cat, uh, you know, you're a player of the year in the state, you're going here to Texas, all this stuff. And then here you are down here doing a varsity practice and practicing with an eighth grade team that you don't, it's voluntary. Mm -hmm. Nah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, it was a, that's something I definitely learned being out there for sure. So it was a, it was a good experience. That's like if Brandon Ingram came and popped into summer league practice and like was going ham. Right though, that's exactly what it would be like. Speaking of that, summer league. Um, but speak about you know because we got some connection with um Aaron Miles up there. How was that connecting with uh, our our Portland brother out there and with the Pelicans? Did that make things easier? It was like when I first saw him, like he looked at me like he knew me, and I didn't. I didn't really know. Like I never really met him. Um, I never really met him before. And so he looked very familiar. And I'm like, I know this guy. And as soon as he told me he was from Portland, like I knew he was Aaron Miles. Um, but turning around and seeing him, it was like, man, I felt like it just kind of really helped the transition. Just having a familiar face, like somebody that really knows the game and stuff and can really help me in terms of how to uh, leave like an impact. Um, and we chopped it up for a while just about the process and like moving forward and stuff like that. Um, so it was, it was good to pick his brain about like kind of what his approach was. And obviously like, it's different, but like he said that too, like he said, it's different, but like he was kind of putting his, himself in my shoes and, you know what I'm saying? Giving me advice. So it was, uh, that was big. That was big time. Like, I feel like that was kind of like a random event that happened. Like the fact that I got signs for the, uh, for the summer league late, uh, kind of late later, like closer towards the, toward closer towards the tournament um and so I feel like he just got like he just got hired there too at like around the same time like when I met him he said it was his first day there and I was like oh wow so like the how that ended up was it was like a it was a blessing for sure what were some of the things coming out of summer league now, obviously your your experience I don't know what you expected going in but uh man kind of what did you take from it especially like you said, you coming in a little bit later, um, you know, the first couple of games, like didn't play, didn't play maybe as much, but just, man, kind of talk about what that experience was, what you, what you tried to bring to the table and what you, what you took from it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like going into it, I knew like uh, the types of things I would have to do in order to, to get playing time. And I feel like that was definitely like defending being able to defend and communicate, I feel like that was my edge, like how I could kind of make myself like impactful to the game. And so I just kind of focused on doing that and just showing showing good feel for the game. You know what I'm saying? Like learning the actions and being able to play like fluidly within them. Um, and like Aaron Miles definitely helped me that helped me with that. And so did the other coaches. I feel like they did a really good job of like like helping me progress and like kind of giving me the answers to the test, like what I needed to do. And so it, it it definitely helped me like understand what I had to do like in terms of just defending, rebounding, um, and like what like what I mentioned, just knowing what what I have to do out there like in terms of offense, what we're running, and stuff that we have to like that kind of makes us the most efficient on offense. So being able to see that and try to build on it, um, stuff like that, I feel like it was a, that's why I feel like it was a good experience because I feel like I was learning a lot, um, learning a lot and really trying to apply it and staying ready. Like, uh, the first game I played, um, it was, I want to say it was Saturday or Sunday, Sunday night, 7 PM against, uh, the Warriors. And it's the second half, third quarter. And like coach, like the, uh, our assistant coach house, he, uh, he was like, Mark, and like I'm at the end of the bench, right? Like I'm just kind of watching the game, and it's like mock, and I don't I don't hear him. And like somebody taps my shoulder, and I look over, and he's like mock, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like I I took off my warm up quick, 
ran up to the uh to the scoreboard, checked in, and like getting into the game, it was like I don't know. It, it was the it was the like my body was feeling crazy. <laughs> like it was kind of like it wasn't an out of body experience, but it was like it was like an intense experience, like being out there. Uh, Curry was there sitting sitting court. So I, I didn't even recognize him though. Like I wasn't paying attention to nothing but but what was going on in the game. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was just locked in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, I, mean, I I had fun and I feel like I grew while playing in it um, and being out there for so long. It was like, it felt like kind of like a mini training camp and playing in a tournament. Like it felt good to do that, like to, to compete at that level. You deserve to be there, man. All the work that you put in. Um you were talking about the things that it took to get you on the floor, communication and defense. But I know mm -hmm. when I watched the highlights, um, you were make, doing a lot of playmaking. Um, and I thought that your game looked really patient. Like just um, that's the, the part of being able to stick is that, you know, like looks like a veteran. You just were really slowed down and under control. And typically players come out of college or younger players trying to come in they're just mm -hmm. wild, cowdy, moving fast, turbo the whole time. And so that's that just stood out to me a lot. And I've always thought that you're, you know, one of your very best attributes is your ability to pass the ball and make others better. Yeah, absolutely. And that I feel like the way I kind of look at it is like different tiers. So like when I when I'm when I do like those like the foundational stuff that I have to do to be in the game, like defending, talking, rebounding, stuff like that. Um, and then like on top of that, like when I'm able to secure that, then I can kind of focus on really showing those different like playmaking abilities, being able to shoot the ball, uh, and just overall feel for the game. So that's kind of like how I see it mentally. Um, and so it was, it felt good to do that, like to, to have that experience and to feel what it's like to be out there. Um, because it, now it's like familiar, so it, it'll be easier to to continue to like tap into that. Paul, did you see what he just did? Same thing. So we can't, we can't just uh, tiptoe around that. We got to back up and mock. I'd like to see if you could go to the third level or potentially fourth level and just take your mm -hmm. time and, and go through those layers because the way you just articulate, I, I need to uh, like package this and, and steal it. This this needs to be said to every single player, no matter if it's pro, college, high school, youth, because mm -hmm. everybody thinks they go to fourth or fifth level, and then maybe they'll do the first layer. Uh, <laughs> right. So could you could you maybe go to three or four layers with that, and it may, you know you can only put add maybe two to each layer, but just build up on that and what it would look like, so so yeah. that the listeners can, can and watchers can get it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I feel like the framework could be different for every player, obviously. Um, but I feel like the foundation of it in terms of being able to be in the game, like that first year, like I mentioned, being able to to get minutes and be on the court um, obviously comes with first, like the coach has to trust you. Um, and I feel like in order to build that trust, like the bottom line that for them, like the bottom line that you have to achieve for them, uh, to trust you is to be able to defend, like not let your guy score on you and be able to be a good team defender. So defend and then obviously be physical and, and uh, get as many rebounds as you can for me anyways. Um, and then that second tier, as I mentioned, uh, kind of focusing more on the offensive end, um, having the ball in my hands, making different reads and stuff like that when I can, uh, being somebody, being like a guy that the ball doesn't stick to. So, you know what I'm saying? Like being able to keep good flow, like stuff like that, setting good screens, cut into the basket, um, and kind of just knowing what's going on, uh, where I got to be rotating and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of like that second tier playmaking and then just kind of tapping into being able to feel out the game and, and make different reads. Uh, that third tier, I would say, is uh, being aggressive um like really uh like when you have the ball making quick decisions but making them like aggressively um because I feel like that kind of just helps you in terms of not playing obviously not playing passively 
Um, and then that fourth, I would say for me is just being like, like aggressive kind of paired with, uh, just kind of hunting, like hunting shots and like knowing where you, where you can produce on the court and where you're efficient, um, and getting those kinds of good shots. Uh, where the step backs come in, huh? <laughs> That's where the, uh, <laughs> over there it goes. But uh, yeah, I feel like that's what it is for me in terms of like when I'm in the game, like kind of climbing up that that pyramid or whatever you want to call it, like within the within the flow of the game. Can I ask that? First of all, I don't know if I've ever seen it that be done. Maybe somebody over wings and stuff have done it. But like this on a pot, I haven't seen that articulated like that. Um, can I ask you this? When when you've played and you tried to go from the fourth tier down when you first come in, or how your game has felt when you've literally rooted yourself in that bottom mm -hmm. layer, what how did the game turn out? You know, from them two different perspectives. Yeah, I mean, I feel like generally speaking, when like my mental isn't focused on the things I can control, uh, I feel like it kind of digs me in like a deeper hole. Um, just in terms of like confidence, confidence overall, um, because I feel like if I'm not doing that, like if, if things aren't going well for me offensively and I'm not playing defense and rebounding, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not talking, I'm not leading. Like if my mental is so focused on me, not like achieving those third and fourth tiers, then it's taken away. Like, not only is that, but I'm not doing anything at all. So. I feel like that's kind of the, I guess, like the side effects of uh, like approaching the game like that. And it does happen. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're basketball players, like we want to score and stuff like that. So it does happen. Uh, but just being aware of it when it does and bringing yourself back to that, you know what I mean? Like back to the foundation and what you, like how you can uh, impact the game and, and things you can, can uh, control. How have you found balance in that? I mean, obviously going, kind of your <clears throat> progression, your journey going from where like at Texas, it was really just, I need to do levels one and two, like your level one and two in order to get on the floor <clears throat> to Hawaii. You had, you know, your first year there, like, man, you did those things consistently and then got to three every now and again. Mm -hmm. I know last year it was like, man, how do you get to three and four more? Cause like team may have needed more, right? Like being in a bigger role. Yeah. Like, how did you balance that? Cause obviously one and I'll say this one and two to me for you have always been like natural in what you've put, what you put your energy into, right? Like what, like yep. your focus for the most part in any setting that you've been in, I mean, hell you playing minutes on a team that won a gold medal because you did one and two consistently, right? Like defensive rebounding, talking, positioning, ball mover, like that stuff was natural. You get into spots where, where those other things are needed kind of how mm -hmm. have you tapped into that? How have you balanced that and kind of the expectations of that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a, a progress for sure. Like figuring out uh, just the college game and like really getting into it, like really kind of getting involved with the system. I feel like being able to, to kind of navigate that uh, was definitely uh like an experience um but I feel like it's been a, a good progression and like you said it's it's not going to stay the same like you're going to continue to evolve it like with the more experience you get the more games that you play uh the more that you're just kind of working on your craft um and so to kind of see the like where I was uh where I was before and how I how I've been able to to kind of continue to build on those tiers um it's something like it's like a feeling I can't forget and I have to be able to continue to build on it you know what I mean can see like get a taste of what it feels like and then do all you can to to kind of lock in on that no nah, your God. game yeah mm -hmm. I was just gonna say regardless of where you go and, and, and your foundation being what it is one and two are gonna have to be the steps you take regardless right like if, if all your game is were was just Man, being someone that, that your size can shoot the ball, mm -hmm. all you were doing was coming in and shooting the ball. You didn't know how to defend. You weren't really putting attention towards rebounding. You were really quiet on the on both ends of the floor. 
that's a really hard spot to go into. Like, yeah, but I shoot it. Like mm -hmm. you got to be lights out, like 40 plus percent everywhere you go and your leeway is so small. Exactly. You might not get to that point. If you're enjoying the Let's Talk Hoops podcast, make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe on YouTube for more content on recruiting, player development, team development, basketball IQ, and more at Hoop Dreams B Ball and at Coach C Foss. Now, back to the show. Mock, you don't even know, man. Like, uh, I know you smell and taste and see how close you are where you're at, but I, I know. A miles and I know he looked you in your eyes and how he talked to you and let you know like hey man like keep doing this right yeah. it's crazy keep that you know that <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> hey, hold on sorry I, I can't lie it's crazy that you just reenacted that <laughs> because that's exactly what he would do he would come up to me with that same exact approach I would say Kamaka um, from knowing Aaron and Beans, you could hit on this even more. The way you just broke stuff down, I, for you know, that was my favorite player ever from the town because of the things that you just hit on. Like, I remember seeing that as a, as a seventh and eighth grader, that he could impact an entire game with mm -hmm. or without scoring. Now, this is a guy that ended up being a state champion, team was nationally ranked. He ends up being National High School Player of the Year. But that's in a class that has a guy that scored 100 points in a game that year in DeJuan Wagner. That's Eddie Curry and Tyson Chandler's class. That's Kwame Brown's class who goes number one. He's National High School Player of the Year. And the whole, the whole deal with it was, man, was an incredible leader from jump. Like, man, he had right. so many personalities. He had to try to manage and all the talent he had to manage there. at right. Jeff, And then did it at Kansas. I mean, he, Mike was just on with us. Aaron started every game at Kansas except for one. And that was senior night his freshman year. Like, you're not doing that unless you can look somebody in the eyes and tell them exactly what the hell you need them to do. <laughs> exactly. That's right? crazy. So, so yeah. him doing that, um, man, and you know, man, that's Deontay's older cousin. So think about times you've been in the gym with Deontay and him look at you like, man, I don't give a damn if you're six, nine or not. Man, we go to wherever, exactly. wherever. That's that's his older cousin. So like the pedigree for that is already built in. Right. Like other stuff around it, scoring, whatever else, all that stuff always was uh kind of on the periphery for him. Yeah, he's a <laughs> yeah, he I feel like that team, like I don't I didn't do much research on them, you know what I mean? Like the team that wants to stay with uh with Aaron Miles. Was Mike Lee on that team? Who else? Like is there anybody else that's like a familiar face that that they played with or was was it just kind of them and what did that look like there were like six d1 guys go ahead false you tell them say it was, it was it was eight d1s on that group so brandon lincoln oh. played at oregon um man had a cup of tea playing professionally anton jarrell um started and played at uh utep and then portland state man like six six wing man yeah big <laughs> long arms man go put two hands on the rim constantly <laughs> Brooks, who was man, B Brooks was a problem. Um what, what what he what position he played? Point guard. Point guard. So put it this way, it was him and Aaron in the backcourt. He's a yeah, I was about to say, oh, so they was running one and two. Nah, like one and one. <laughs> like a two-headed monster at the point guard, like, but that's crazy. If you need them to go get a bucket, they'll shake the shit out of you and, and, and go get a bucket, but they're just like Hey, no, nah, we running this like two commanding presences, right? Uh, running a group of cats, yeah, right. And I feel like every team that wins, like they, every team that wins has has those guys for sure. That point guard, that point guard position is critical. Well, what is the what, like? What are we talking about? Because that I believe you embody that stuff. So you know, mm -hmm. we don't have to make labels and say you got to right. you got to this is. It's like these are things that help you win games. Mm -hmm. Right. Bottom line. Matt, well, Mark, hit, hit us with this real quick. You talked about kind of learning the college game earlier and learning kind of the fit with that. How do you mm -hmm. feel like, especially because your skill set is a little bit different, um, man, that your game fits to being a pro, whether that's 
you know, G League NBA stuff, you know, kind of that model that you've already seen um, with having some experience with summer league or stuff that's international, because obviously the spacing is different. The, the pace of the game is different. How do you feel like with what you do already fits into that? Uh, I mean, being able to kind of mention it earlier, I feel like one way to describe my game is that it's it has like like that chameleon effect. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it doesn't. It's kind of kind of what Bino said too. Is like it just affects winning, which I think you know what I mean. Like every team is trying to win, right? So I feel like having those qualities and really kind of honing in on those. Uh, and then building on them, um, I feel like that's going to be the way or my approach to to how this first year goes. Uh, and so I'm making decisions too, like in terms of where I'm going to play at and the different options that I have, uh, kind of navigating that would, that will put me in the best position for one. And like kind of my priority is just being able to to continue to grow my game. You've been consistently doing that your whole damn life. So that's like, most people, <laughs> I'm being honest, like most people get to this level and they have to learn work ethic and learn um, to get a routine going and stuff. And it's like, maybe this is the Mr. Miyagi teaching that we've been doing for years, but it's like the first line of order is to get you learning a work ethic. Right, get right. You in that and routine, this will translate at every level of basketball that you go on to. And obviously the bigger picture is that it translates to life and whatever you want to do there. Um, yes. But if you if you fight that early, maybe because you're talented and you make it on, well, there will be a, a point where you're hit and it's like, yo, what's your routine? And you ain't mm -hmm. got no routine. You're just going to get weeded out. And so um, that's why I feel really comfortable and confident for you at this level because I think that your approach and your routine and your work ethic will weigh out. You just have to outlast maybe – you might not get the first or second opportunity. You just got to outlast it. I'm telling you. That's why mm -hmm. I said I can tell Bay Miles, like, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's that's the truth. And, like, kind of looking back on it and talking about it now, like, reflecting on it, it's, it's always good to do stuff like this, I feel like, just to continue to give you that perspective. That's, that's what that's, um, Gazzy J said. Yeah. Well, Mike, but, with, with that in mind, kind of reflecting, man, tell us this. What's what's kind of the toughest lesson that basketball has taught you? Um, I know you've had kind of a, a journey, right? You've had a lot of yeah. things that have taken place, especially over the last six, seven years. But, <laughs> yeah, man, what, what do you think is the kind of the toughest lesson or toughest thing you've had to go through with basketball? Uh, toughest thing I've had to go through. That's one I got to kind of, like, think about really – um, Take but it's, time. but it's, it's all, it's like, one thing I will say though, is that it's a, it's a cycle, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's highs and lows, like it's not always going to go how you want it to go. Um, and I feel like going through those kind of like different trials, uh, and obviously it's, it's just basketball and like you kind of, which is like another thing I feel like that contributes to why it's, it's such an important game to me anyways, is like, it teaches you in a game that stuff isn't always gonna go your way, you know what I mean? And, and like the outcome is not always gonna be what you want it to be. Um, and that's kind of just shown through, like what I mentioned, just the different trials that you gotta go through uh, and like the different mental battles you have, the different physical battles you have. Um, I felt like it, it, it like overall, it teaches you kind of how life is too, you know what I mean? So I feel like just kind of looking at it that way, um, and really being able to to kind of uh, work on those different skills. Um, but yeah, I feel like just going through those those trials and tribulations are like uh, to kind of make you a better basketball player. I feel like those are those are definitely some tough times. And I can't really think of like one specifically, but there's definitely like you guys know you guys who you guys coach like you see it, uh, and you guys like help young players. Uh, develop those skills so I feel like it's definitely it has a it has like a a, a real impact uh, on players and guys that you guys coach and stuff like that so it's it's definitely big well let me ask you this one specifically uh, 
man, having gone through a transfer process, obviously from you got your degree at Texas, but you know, that having to, that having to change course, right. I mean, I wasn't mm -hmm. one with Shaka leaving, but also just kind of what situation was and that <laughs> right. having to change course, how, how difficult was that, I guess, in the moment of like, man, I'm going to have to leave UT in order to get to what I want to get to, but mm -hmm. then also having to step back into something from, you know, not playing a ton your, your third year into like, man, I'm going to have to like, regrow my game and confidence yeah and opportunity yeah to speak to that uh that was a that pro that process and like that time that I went through at Hawaii was was huge for my game I feel like just in terms of like kind of I guess having a fresh start like you know what I'm saying um having that fresh start being able to to kind of cultivate the type of game that like how I wanted to play and then obviously how I could do that and and having the coaching staff and and my teammates really helped me with that process because it wasn't going to be easy you know what I mean like like you said switching kind of switching roles uh in terms of really just being on the court and being one of the leaders like one of the primary guys uh it was definitely a a big transition but that's what I wanted though and I feel like that's what I needed to to continue to grow as a player um and I feel like definitely showed me that I could play uh, and really kind of solidify like the belief that I have in, in my ability to play basketball. So the transition was, it was uh, obviously it had its highs and lows as well, but overall I feel like we just kept getting better um, over like over the two years that I was out there and having my teammates, like one guy on the team that, uh he's he was been there for a while and like was one of my good friends that actually was uh like recruited me to go out there like he called me as soon as he saw me in the transfer portal <laughs> uh but yeah so that's my guy uh Samuta Abea. uh he just graduated from Hawaii too so we kind of going through this process together um but yeah having guys like that or that continue to like uh reinforce those beliefs and like are in the same process and trying to get better too like it definitely helps uh that transition i remember that time because uh iran had hit me and was like <laughs> he said man i see kamaka's in like because he, he, he you know we've been doing i don't know if iran ever unpacked our relationship but you know he was at hawaii he told me he was oh, i was gonna say hey you guys i don't know if this is like illegal or whatever but he told me uh he told me he was in the hotel with I five with the coaches and stuff in the hotel. They can't get him. He he, he was that was at St. Mary's years ago. They can't get him now. Statute of limitations, <laughs> man. We're outside. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, so um, you know, he coached Dom at Hawaii when he was an assistant. I didn't know Dom went to Hawaii. Like I don't know how I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Dominic he was, Waters. Uh, Dominic Waters was the whack freshman of the year. At Hawaii. With Hawaii. Dude, the what team friend. was oh five oh six. Oh five oh six. Okay. Did they make the tournament or the NIT? They, they got probably up there. The, they didn't huh? make the tournament, but they were like a competitive team. Okay. Um, well, I say maybe the NIT Foster. I can't. I know they're on the doorstep of, of postseason stuff. Whether they were, but nonetheless. Um. So from back then, got connected with him, and so when we started I five in 2007 mm -hmm. because we already knew him through dom he would just come over and watch our games and then next yeah. thing you know like oh i like mose i like stephen holt and then he started recruiting our guys um because he went back to st mary's right he was at st mary's after hawaii and so that's when he got holt there garrett paul mccoy yeah you know, um and then when he got to hawaii uh whatever and so he's there and he calls me Tell me about Kamaki. He he always go. Is he is he our type of guy? You know he is he is he <laughs> that's is, his is, he I, is he an I five guy? Is he is he is he I five? That's what he'd be, I'd be like. I was like I said I always I, I man, that's I so him, like, that's him right there. You know, no, I know. Like, he's very particular. Like he's a very particular guy. And like he uh he's a great coach, man. Great guy though. So I yeah. always when he do that, I'll always go. Hey man, I ain't fucking doing this shit with you, man. <laughs> I mean, whatever. 
<laughs> but see, like it's like how Foss knows my interaction. He knows right, that. right. He's just taking no away. He just, he'll just hit back like, uh, "Can he do this or something?" And and I was like, "Hey, man, goddamn! If I'm sending them to you, the motherfucker can play." <laughs> and I was like, "I got. I just. I think I just called him. I said, "Hey, man, if you can get Kamaka, I said, I I don't know if there's a more perfect type of fit for what you want. The type of player he's from Hawaii, all his different stuff, or right." family from Hawaii and it's uh right. I said man and outside of basketball I was like man you ain't gonna meet a, another fucking you think he's a cyborg or something you ain't gonna meet a better person he's fucking perfect <laughs> um Appreciate so, you, you know. yeah, yeah you already know man and 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 uh so then he just kept going so I was just really happy when it got done and it's like man I know yeah. he's gonna take care of you it's like when you're in your transfer port or you're doing that transfer situation everybody's massaging your balls and telling you everything this and that right. that's but like i know what iran can do but like if i start going hey i know you can do then you're like motherfucker you're, you're trying to convince me too so once i par paired y'all i just stepped back that was it yeah and that's yeah. like you knew the relationship would where it would go from there like you didn't even have to that's all you had to do was you know what i mean be that mutual um but yeah, and even before that, like prior to me transferring, like when I was in high school, I remember we were we was at an AAU tournament, uh, and we was uh, we was getting dinner. I don't remember where it was, but we was getting dinner somewhere, and that's when Ron called me first. And I don't know if it was you. I don't know if he called you, and then you put me on the phone with him, or if he called me. I think he called my phone and then put you on the phone with him. It might have been before the date in June yep. that year before you could start talking. So we was probably in Indianapolis or something. Yeah, like one of them places. I remember that conversation and it was like, okay, Hawaii, that's tough. Like, you know what I mean? Just the connection, like the connection is there, obviously. Uh, but to see it come full circle though, like that was to live it out, you know what I mean? To have those experiences, uh, it was special. It's all about relationships, man. And that's- right. Yeah, the things we try to connect in I, I can speak for false on this it's like there's a lot of choices out there and it's like if i ever am having something to say that might give a perspective or or look like i'm influencing them it's like i'm gonna do it with these type of people that i know have been doing it for decades like i don't look at around like a college coach that's one of my closest friends right that happens to be a college coach right yeah, and I feel like you guys, like the network you guys have for sure is, it's a, it's such a, it's a big factor, I feel like, in in getting young players, um, not getting, but just kind of helping, like being a part of that process, like really bringing out like the full potential of it. Really, um, it takes a while, takes time, but like to build up the network, you got to also put yourself out there. And just like we're saying mm -hmm. right now, it's all about building relationships or you're doing it the other way and you're trying to do a transaction. Like, Oh, I want to be friends with uh false because he knows Damon Stoudemire at Georgia tech, or um, he can get me in contact with Mosey with the rockets and then get me as like, not nah, just right. a good person. And then through that, then doing the right things. And through that, those things will happen. Exactly. Like having the right intention behind it for sure is it's a it's a critical factor. You got one of the best characters, and you're one of my favorite players I've ever coached, Kamaka. Uh, just for everything you stand for, man. Like you, your approach and and your character to the game. And I knew I try to throw some shit at you. Be like, let me see if I can. This motherfucker too perfect. Let me see if I throw him off. And the only thing you can do is bend over. You never cussed me out. I was waiting for you to be like, fuck you, motherfucker. Ah, hang loose, piece of shit. Like, you never <laughs> do it, man. Nah, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, just hearing those words, like, it's it's good to see that I'm still on this path and being able to do this with the help of you guys, like, where it all started and to be able to reflect on it and talk about it and stuff is, it's good to, it's good to have these conversations. We're, we're excited for you, Kamaka. I know that's something that, that both of us, I know when he hit me back yesterday, it was like, nah, Mark, Mark said he's going to get on. I'm like, man, I was through the roof about it. But just excited to see what next step in your journey is because, like you yeah. said, man, the, the approach has been right. The work has been right. Uh, the stuff that you've had to kind of endure and grow through, 
um, especially over these last five years, like, man, you put yourself in a position where you're right on the doorstep of, of achieving your dreams, man. We're, we're excited to be able to be able to see and sit back and watch it. Nah, absolutely. And it's, uh, it's definitely the experience is, is very unknown. Like it's a lot of uncertainty. So it's good to, uh, I don't know. It's it's been fun just trying to navigate it and stuff. So we'll see. I mean, within the next month, I'll probably be, who knows, somewhere in a different state or a different country. So that's a if that's not a big change and not going to be a, a shock, then I feel like that's kind of what I want and what I'm excited for. So it'll be good. If there's somebody who could adjust to a new environment quickly, thousands of miles from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had some, we had some practice with that for sure. For sure, wow. man. Kamaka, man, appreciate having you on tonight, man. Excited to see where stuff goes um, moving forward. Um, but yeah, man, just just appreciate appreciate you. Not just the time being on, but appreciate you. Nah, it's, it's always good to catch up, man. I'm glad I got on here. It was it was a good time. Thank you. Make sure you stay in touch with a Miles. Don't yep. wait for him to hit you. I would just weekly just keep staying in touch and picking his brain. And I'm gonna um. I'm gonna send you Nigel's number uh too. I think he'd be a good one to pick his okay. Yeah. And then I'll shoot. You got Mosey's Words. number. Who Mosey? Yeah, I got Mosey's number. Hit Mo hit Mosey too. But Nigel, he just signed with Olympiacos. You know, they just won that he was with Real Madrid last year. They won the Euroleague Championship. Is, was he teammates with Mike James? Is that where that's not where Mike James is playing, right? AS Monaco. So they were oh, both okay. the final four, but um who was it? Mike and them. Uh, lost a tough one to Barcelona and then yeah, Barcelona. Size and bracket. Madrid. Yeah. But what I wanted, league is that? That's the that's the year. That's that's it, right? That's the top, that's the top, top league. Your, your, your league, yeah. Euro league. Okay. That's yeah, I gotta I gotta familiar my familiarize myself with just the different even, and stuff. Not even with about the um just like for that, it's um these people are specific for you because they know the journey and um, yeah, exactly. they'll give you like, if you telling me, I think you got what it takes to play in the NBA. It's just a matter. You keep staying on that path. Exactly. You know I mean? But open yourself up to all these opportunities and all those guys I'm talking about. Yeah. Help give you the blueprint and make it simple for you. No, nah, absolutely. Appreciate you, you being on. man. Appreciate you, man. Love you, big dogs. I'm proud of you. Appreciate you, man. Love you. Love you guys. Come on. Y'all take care now. You two big dogs. If you like this episode of Let's Talk Hoops, make sure to follow, subscribe, and share to keep the conversation going.